Today is Saturday, April 18th. It's about 5 p.m. And if I didn't tell you these things, you would have no idea. Could be anywhere. Could be any time. In fact, if I didn't tell you that I was wearing my bathrobe, you wouldn't know. <laughs> but I am. Today is the first day. Um since any of this pandemic news started, that I I just never got dressed today, really. I mean, I, I took a shower. I thought I would get dressed. Uh, and then I started writing a story that was really sort of my, uh, sort of a journal entry. And then it turned into something else. And then it turned into a whole story. And I actually sent it to the local newspaper which is kind of crazy. It ended up taking me all day. And I didn't initially know where I was going with it, but there it is. Uh, it's a story about Sydney and what he's doing, teaching fitness classes in the basement, which anyone who watches this stuff already knows. Um, so that was kind of interesting. Um, uh, the part that makes me happiest is that I stuck with it all day because that has been very hard for me to do, to stay focused long enough to actually finish something. But I do remember that the last thing I said last night um, was that I, I wanted to be easier on myself. So I just decided to take it easy and not care if I didn't get dressed and I honestly didn't care if I finished the story but I decided to stick with it because really what else was more important um, sometimes that's a little bit easier on a Saturday but as we all know days are just blending together so it's hard to distinguish one day from any other day really time is all wonky merged and days are all wonky and merged and none of it really matters. Um, it's definitely a gray day. I just saw a seagull fly overhead. Um, so yeah, I haven't been out at all. Sydney just took the dogs out. They're now crashed out on the floor next to me. Um, And yeah, that's okay. It's okay to be super slow and super quiet, super relaxed. I just made myself a big omelet 30 minutes ago. So really, I think that was breakfast, lunch, and dinner because I don't really feel like anything else. Um, it's, I haven't even felt like watching movies lately. I wonder if anyone else is going through this, where I'm having a hard time taking in any media, um, particularly, even though my favorite genre is probably spy, thriller, drama kinds of things, uh, I'm finding that really hard to absorb and if it has violence in it oof, yeah I really can't which is weird because I was able to watch a lot of that for years that was probably my favorite genre of things and sometimes I would just um, let entire movies or series just play on Netflix like play on this laptop while I was doing some other work on my um, on my not my desktop but on my monitor um, almost like the the people in the show were sort of keeping me company um, and I liked that but maybe that's it I just don't have any room for company right now I don't have any um, I don't have any extra space you know I'm just trying to carve out my own space and let whatever I need to feel sort of come in and come through and 
not be so mean to myself about all of it. It's so funny how it's uh, every interaction with every person feels different at this point. You know, every conversation starts with how are you and and everyone means it in a much more intense way. Um, there is no business as usual, at least among my friends and in my worlds. Um, there's no Boundaries are different. Uh, edges are different. Um, when I wrote this story, I wasn't sure whether I wanted it to be a blog post, a Facebook story, uh, some kind of a news thing. Did I, should I send it to a local paper? Should I send it to a New York paper? Should I send it to... Um, something like a, like Medium or Huffington Post or one of those places. And it all seemed possible. I actually, I asked some friends in my branding group what they thought, and um, someone said local paper. And I thought, yeah, that feels right. I'll just go with local paper. So I reached out to a couple of local journalists I know, and I asked them how to submit something to the local paper. And I didn't have any fear around sending it. I think the story is really great. When I, I read it to Sydney so that he could um, make sure he agreed or approved or, you know, make sure I got all the facts right as well. And um, just reading it made him cry and then that made me cry. And so I thought, well, if it makes you cry, it's a good story, right? <laughs> and I think it is because I think he's doing something really uh, wonderful. And important. Um, so yeah, I just asked the question like, how do I submit this? Who do I send it to? And those are such funny little things that I think hold people back in normal life, whatever normal life is, you know, in that other life we were living. We're also afraid to put ourselves out there and uh, do things that are outside of our normal or comfort zone. And on the one hand, uh, my comfort zone has changed to feel more, um, to feel smaller, you know, like I, I'm just comfortable in my little house and, um, and I'm very, uh, conscientious about the things I wear every day, they, they have to feel good. They have to feel comfortable. I, you know, one day I tried to get fancy and put on a blazer or one of these beautiful jackets that I have um, that are relatively new, and I couldn't do it. I couldn't, I couldn't wear it for a day because it was so um, constricting and tight and it didn't feel good. And I just... It's not that I want to be in yoga wear all day, every day. I don't. Uh, but I just want to be flexible and soft and uh, also not synthetic. Like I actually notice if I put some kind of, you know, polyester plastic clothing on my body, I don't like it. Um, so I've really been wearing natural materials, soft things, stretchy things. Um, and then my other comfort zone also feels, uh, well, I was saying that my comfort zone feels smaller, but it also feels larger. Like, uh, like I'll just call anybody, like I'll just say anything to anyone and reach out to anyone and, um, you know, make comments on people's Instagram or, um, blog or whatever that, that are, um, I don't know, more personal, more personal than what I would have normally done. So I find that interesting too. Um, I, this is my new normal. I don't know. My new comfort zone. I don't know. Uh, uh, this is part of it. This, this whole conversation, this, this has been happening for exactly what, 21 days now? 23 days now? <laughs> there are no videos of Tanya before this time, I, I assure you. 
um, I think there are two podcasts or maybe three interviews that I ever did in my entire life before this. Um, so I don't know what all of that means, but I hope it's happening for a lot of people. I hope millions of people are stepping into new and unknown comfort zones and feeling comfortable about it and feeling relaxed about it. Like it's just not a big deal. And it's not. And remember, you do not want to die with your music still in you. So if your music has to do with speaking up about anything, then it's, this is the time. You might as well just start now. Because on the one hand, no one's looking. On the other hand, no one ever was. <laughs> I thought about that yesterday. I was, I think I was in the shower and I was thinking, yeah, you know that thing how you, you're so worried about what other people think of you? Well, nobody's thinking about you right now. Nobody. Because people can barely cover thinking about themselves. I mean, people in close quarters, we, I've had a bunch of conversations with people about um, partners, parents, um, friends, all of the different living situations that people are living in right now are super interesting, aren't they? Because either your partner's getting on your nerves and you can't wait for some freedom again, or maybe it, this whole experience is bringing you closer, closer to a child, um, closer to yourself if you're alone. Um, I had a friend say she was feeling more ready for a relationship now as a result of this time. I think it's so great. I, I think we're playing such a funny game of musical chairs. You know, the music stops and you have to just stop where you are and you get the chair you get. So we're all getting different experiences and, and I know they are not all fun experiences. Um, but we are all getting different experiences and I'm pretty happy about mine. I mean, yes, it would be great to have Alex here, but I don't know if I could handle it. You know, one more person to um, cook for and feed and take care of and, you know, another person making dirty dishes. I mean, Sydney's amazing. Like the fact that he cleans up all the time makes my life so much more livable right now. And Alex is not a big dish cleaner. <laughs> it's not even a little dish cleaner. Um, so on the one hand, I so miss him, wish I could hug him, see him. I wish he could go surfing and, you know, at least see his friends in the waves. And I know people in California can't even do that, but here in New York, we can. Um, so I'm sorry that he's missing his friends and I'm sorry that I'm missing him. And yet I feel he's still having pretty good experiences in his situation. And I know I'm having good experiences in mine. And, um, yeah, I, I know this isn't forever. It's just a little, it's just a pressure cooker. We are all going to come out cooked in a different way. <laughs> Hopefully not long from now. Hopefully. So in the meantime, I will leave you with my snoring dog. I really, I think I have to show you my snoring dog on the floor. Anybody? Yep. Oops, there he is. Hello, snoring dog. Catch that? <laughs> I think everyone should enjoy the snoring dog. Oh, he's up. All right. See you tomorrow. Technically, it should be Sunday.